Welcome to another episode of Replay, everyone. I am Andrew Reiner, and today I brought along some of my old pals. Dan oh, Reichert from Giant Bomb. Yes, how's it going? The Beast Cast. That's what I'm on. Take my sunshine Steal away. Steal my sunshine. Steal my sunshine. Take it away. <laughs> That's the worst title, Reiner. Take Gotta my workshop sunshine. this. Tim Turry. Hello. Of Capcom. Hi, good to be here. Dan, God bless you for defending Mario Sunshine's honor. It's a fantastic, fantastic 3D platform. Among the best ever made. We'll get into Agreed. We'll Agreed. Get into that. And then Mike <laughs> Mahardy from GameSpot. Uh, he does The Lobby. Mm-hmm. He does Resident Knievel, which mm-hmm. will be uh, a factor today. Mm-hmm. We're going to yeah. need your knowledge. We're going to oh, tip, man. tip, tip, tap into those skills. Ooh. Don't rely too much on me. I suck at this game, but... Well, that's why I'm playing. Yeah, thank you. And also the host of Reboot. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, Tim, let's take it away. Let's yeah. play some Res Evil 3. This is the second time this game has appeared on replay. Mm. The first time was as a You're Doing It Wrong with Kyle Hilliard wearing, a, 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 I don't know, what would, what would you call it? A surfbot mask yeah, that he, he couldn't see through. He, he wore an old Halloween costume helmet uh, from Ben Rees when he was uh, Frank West. Uh, wore a surfbot helmet, could not see. And I tried to guide him through it. That was a you're doing it wrong. We're trying a you're doing it right today. Correct. Uh, brand new reveal for a uh, oh. for a, a, a new segment. Play segment. A title yeah. slide ready. And, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's, let's throw to that. Okay. We're good. Okay. Dan, right. Stan. Yeah. Uh, we, we'll, can, can I try that? We don't say that can anymore. Can I see if it still works? Oh, dude, careful. Be careful. There's been some bad stuff going remember? on with replay. Do you remember? I've been. I think I've blocked it out. I don't know if I can actually do it. Oh. I'm. Tempted. Stand, stand. Right. I don't know what happened. That was there. fascinating. I don't know either. That was either I don't know what happened. Or... Okay. Uh, uh, but we got Leo Vader in the control room as well. Hey, Leo. Hey, Leo. hey guys. So, if I can help set this up a little bit. So, uh, I, I've always loved playing Resident Evil games with the Game Informer crew. It is one of my favorite things that we, we ever did together. Um, and we played through a lot of them. And I always wanted to give one of my big regrets was not being able to get a really good straight on look at Resident Evil 3. Yes. Uh, we're coming up, uh, it's it's September now. Uh, today is actually September 22nd. Is <gasps> It is the uh, 18th anniversary of the Japanese release of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. It came out in the US uh, in, in November in 1999. And on top of that uh, nerdy level, uh, Jill makes her first as- attempt to escape Raccoon City on September 27th. So like Fair in game, there's extra relevance on top wow. of it. I mean, yeah. we've been planning this for like, Five years to have you guys yep. in the office on this yeah, day. Yeah, had flights booked for a long yep. time. We set up one of your friends with this late, lovely lady. Yep, yep. They ended up getting married just at yeah. this time. September twenty second is the American release date of uh, of me. That's, that's true. <laughs> in 90, 91. They should have a word for that. Yeah. Are they going to local? Are they going to birth anniversary? Have they that, localized okay, that's that? That's pretty good. Yeah. What's, what's have that? they localized that for any other regions yet? You're... No, it's just American still. <laughs> just <a> expensive. <laughs> it was in London for a week. Oh and yeah. Then, uh, Osaka, Japan, but okay. it was a very limited run. Hey, just... t- Tim, you should clarify for the folks at home. This game came out before uh, you were the lead on all the Resident Evil games. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. I was consulting in '99. That's uh, right. Yes. As a how old was I? 50? 15 or something. Yeah. 14. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. yep. Great. Uh, so some context. Uh, this is this is this takes place after Resident Evil One, but the first half of Resident Evil Three takes place 24 hours before Resident Evil Two. It's oh, too confusing. It's a, it's you guys gotta crash. like change that lore. Uh, just retroactively. Just, yeah. But it's perfect. I love it the way that Metal Gear lore is like yeah, just yeah. this inch. This it seems like a kind of a simple story. Well, Metal Gear doesn't seem like a simple story from the surface, but Resident Evil, it's like zombies attacking. We right. see, we see like Ra- Raccoon City being completely overthrown here. And wh- what I love about it, Resident Evil Two is great, but it shows just a little bit more of that initial like mm-hmm. pandemonium, um, and then a little bit after it, it uh, leading to its destruction. But Does it make it clear when the divide is? Is it like oh, two weeks later? And- it's it is a it's. You kind of get it through, like, there are some dates that they show on screen. Basically, at one point, Jill is infected uh, via um, with the virus via Nemesis, because Nemesis is pursuing her via the name of the game. Yeah, that's the big hook on this one, is you yep. are being pursued at all times by, like, a Hulk-like yep. figure. Maybe Hulk isn't the best, uh, or Hunk is the other, oh my God. the other thing in Res Evil. Uh, but yeah, he's always like coming after you. Yeah, ju- you're smashing through walls. Yep. You don't know when to expect him. He's kind of tyrant-like. Yeah, like in yeah. Size and build he and is essentially, in in some ways, what Tyrant was meant to do, or Mister X, uh, which were like, you know, they can they're BOWs that could like target specific uh, targets and then eliminate them 
In this case, they want to take down all the STARS members, which is like the one piece of vocabulary that Nemesis has because they know too much about Umbrella's involvement right. in all of this. And so is he supposed to take them all out? Um, yeah. Okay, so as of right now, who are the active STARS members that are alive? Right now it is, and help me out with this one, Mike, Jill, but Jill, Chris. she's the, besides her and Brad Vickers, they're the last two that are in Raccoon City right now. Chris went off to Europe to try to take, like, lay siege to, um, uh, the Umbrella headquarters. Um, okay. Barry, yeah, he's alive. Barry's around, because he ends up. Comes back in Revelations 2. Yep, and, yeah. and the good ending of this game. Yeah. He comes and picks up Jill. What is the current status of Wesker? Wesker's a dead guy. But then he comes back for five? Uh, he, that's five is where he. Oh, in this game? Wesker? Well, I'm saying, like, yeah, where is Wesker? He's dead at this point. Where you right? think he's dead yeah. because of the in mansion. He's, he, you didn't know that he injected himself with a virus to kind of survive, uh, and he got out of the. Uh, he injected himself before he was killed by the tyrant, killed. And then escape the mansion. Okay, and comes back in five. Yep. It's it's all side note about the Nemesis thing we're talking about. It's always fascinating to hear uh, Jordan Thomas, creative director on Bioshock Two, talk about how the initial plan for they were gonna have one big sister that pursued yeah, you throughout yeah. the game, oh, and not yeah. like multiple uh, bosses that you fight. But that would have been cool. That sounds I'm like a better game. I yeah. I like that concept a lot. And this was like it was still felt like it was pretty fresh at the time. So this was definitely a sequel. Like the these are there's three main Resident Evil games that came out on the original PlayStation. This is one of them. It still followed, you know, the fixed camera angles we're seeing, uh, tank controls where, you know, it's left and right and forward and back. They did have some, like, quality of life improvements. Like, uh, I think it's, uh, okay, that's that. Uh, back and run is a 180-degree quick turn. Hmm. Jill also has, like, a suite of, like, evasive maneuvers that she can do and, like, push off zombies hmm. and dodge. I'm terrible at that stuff. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, they are pretty useful during the actual nemesis encounters if yeah. you want to fight him every time and get the loot uh, but they're tough they are really it's tough timing and positioning and now mike you just played through this what a few months ago a few months ago yeah we're on resident evil 6 we're on the second campaign chris is right now so and that is your resident knievel yep. video series which you can find on gamespot.com yeah and YouTube, our youtube channel sure. yep which is a great run. I, I watched all of your and Mary's uh, yeah, it's run Mary, through Mary the... Kiss, she's at Twitch now, but she was a former video producer at GameSpot for a few years. But yeah, we, we started, we were just going to do the first uh, remake because she had never played any of them aside from 4. Hmm. Uh, and she, I'm, it is admirable. She has held off on Resident Evil 7 for the strict purpose of when we play. Oh, it's going to be the oh, wow. first time. Yeah. I can't wow. wait to she knows. That's great. She knows it's like one of my, it's like my number two or something game this year. She huh. knows... She knows uh, the fine folks at Capcom hey. did a great job on it, but she's uh, it's killing her, but she's been holding off. It's a very good game. Yeah. And she's a big horror fan, too, yeah. so it's been cool to see her perspective on it. Um, yeah, she was always kind of, you know, timid to get into the earlier Resident Evil games. She knows the, they're less forgiving, right. it, 4 being her introduction. But, uh, look, we played the PS4 remake of 1 and, uh, or, yeah, the re-remake, I guess. Um, that's not a joke. I'm, is that what it's called? Re remake for which one? The PS4 remake. Uh, it's just called. Remastered? It's just called Resident uh, Evil. Maybe officially, I call it re remake. But it's the HD HD remaster of the essentially. Game yeah. One, yeah. And then with Resident Evil Five, I jumped in to play co op with her. Uh, and then in six, I've been Piers Nivens and um, what's what's uh, Sheva Leon's. Oh, Leon, partner. it's uh, Helena. Helena. Helena Harper. Harper. Yes. Yep. Let's talk about six for a second. Oh boy. Oh, Tim real, Curry. Real quick, I just wanted to note. Mm -hmm. I also did a <laughs> thing that was. Uh, you can craft your own ammo in this game, yeah. and like there's different combinations that can make like ice rounds for your grenades or shotgun shells. It's kind of a cool crafting thing that in RE seven and it kind of carried forward. You could do some crafting. Yeah. Ice you know, rounds. Another quick ones. aside. I love watching you do men uh, your inventory management. Like. You are on top of it at all times oh, yeah. in this game. He's a pro. It's Thank super you. cool. So we're saved up. I did not mean to change the subject from Resident Evil 6. Well, no. Uh, you love the game. I did. I, I'm in the camp of not necessarily liking it. Oh, it ain't so good. No. Dan very no. much doesn't like it. What bad, about you, Mike? Game. You're, you're um, kind of the unknown quantity here at Game Informer. It's weird because Resident Evil 5 I used to like uh, a lot. And then playing it on our show recently, it got frustrating. Uh, I don't hmm. necessarily know why. I think some of the boss fights and me and Mary can be kind of antagonistic at certain <laughs> points. Uh, but 6, I think we're having more fun with for that show, although I like 5 more. I don't think 6 is a great game, but I think it's dumb enough for our show that it's fun to play. Sure. Uh, I like the fan service in it, but it doesn't feel great. I don't think it feels great. No. It's tough to know whether you're doing damage to bosses and stuff. It just uh, doesn't feel as, I mean, it's an overused word, but polished. You know, yeah. four and five, I felt, were just like these. Four was a masterpiece. Five was a very good game. Mm -hmm. Six feels like kind of a B-tier thing, yeah. you know? And I think that's interesting where they went with seven then, right? Like, mm -hmm. they had a chance maybe to go back 
and reestablish the original formula of, of Resident Evil, but they went in a completely different direction, and I think they knocked it out of the park. Like you're saying, Mike, like your number two, you said this year, probably, yeah, yeah, it's in my top ten right now. Like, what a nice surprise! When, like when I saw the uh, the reveal or the trailer, when everyone found out that it was first person, I thought like, oh man, I feel bad. I hope Tim didn't go to Capcom right when they try this thing with Resident Evil, and then it <laughs> sucks. And I was like, oh man, that'd be that'd be a bummer. And then it turns out it's just totally revitalized the series, yeah. and everyone loved it. And it's like, okay. Yep. It's in, it's in the credits. It was a really fun uh, first, like, big project to be involved in. I was super lucky. And, yeah, I had a little bit different uh, experience with, with the series in that, like, I really liked uh, all of them, essentially. Like, it's my favorite series of all time. And, yeah, I, I definitely understand where people's, like, criticism with Resident Evil 5 and 6 were. Those were definitely more polarizing. So interesting, like the two like best selling games in Capcom history but right. but Capcom obviously like listens to the fans and I think 7 was definitely a reaction to that and like uh it was it was also I think just where the vision was going for uh Nakanishi-san and Takeuchi-san um but yeah like 7 was just astounding to be a part of and, and to love it for completely different reasons than like 4 or 5 which obviously a series sticks around that long it's going to change and it should change and try to evolve but um, I just like that the series has always done. Like you compare like the remaster to four to seven, like there's similarities, but they're all like super mm -hmm. different yeah. games in what they do. Can uh, you talk about the first time you played it? Uh, seven. When? Yeah. When? When was that? How? That would have been like very early of uh, 2017 or no 16 last year. Um, it was like just right starting at Capcom. It was like one of the first things of the first week was like hey uh we're working on resident evil 7 we'd like you to play it and get familiar with it and let us know what you think and i sit down and like there's no preface at all and it's just like people you know i was just working with my 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 capcom family and like they're just setting up the system and then so they're, they're just chatting about whatever work thing and then i'm booting it up get through the intro and it's like you know it was a little rough so you didn't even know like the concept not theme. at all. Wow. So suddenly it's <laughs> I see a dude driving up through like the woods and it's like first person. I'm like, so is this just like a cinematic or something? Are they trying something interesting? Because some like, you know, the hunter reveals and stuff in Resident Evil, they had first person right. sequences going through the doors. And then I get out and I'm walking around. And I'm like, what is happening? And my first feeling was like, I think I, I understand where some people's like hesitation or some concern came from with like, you know, the, the, like horror has had a revival in recent years yeah. in a, a great way with like awesome games like amnesia and outlast and 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 i love pt but these the game was those games are focused on atmosphere and intensity and usually running away from, instead of confronting your horrors and something i always loved about resident evil is i was terrifying but it was also my most favorite horror game to play to actually like interact with it um and then once i got to like there was one sequence you go, you're fighting Jack in the garage, which changed a lot over over iterations. And hmm. uh, at one point, you know, you're like playing Ring Around the Rosie with like a pickup truck that he smashed against a wall. And the team has revealed some of these con these earlier concepts right, right. and some great uh, panels and, and everything. But it, I was, I had some like, I shared some people's hesitations, but it was at the the point where the first mold that it, it appears. You know, after the Jack encounter, and you're about to go into the basement, and there's a safe room right next yeah. to it. And I was sitting there, like, I got, like, three shotgun shells. I'm yeah, almost out of handgun. Yeah. I was doing that math, like, like, survival game math. And I was about to go into an uncharted room, and I was like, oh, this is, like, this is Resident Evil. Uh, and that was, like, a super special moment for that, me. That part specifically is tied to another thought I have about that, which I think it's one of the best actual VR experiences that doesn't feel like a tech demo. Mm -hmm. So that spot you're talking about, the safe room where you go down to the basement. Yeah. I played through like the first three or four hours in VR, and it, it scared the hell out of me. I typically don't get super scared of games. And so I put uh, the headset on my wife, and I was like, hey, <laughs> you, you should check, check this out. out. You should see what it's like. And she stood at the top of those stairs and was just looking down, and she was like, I, I felt her heart and her breathing, and it was just going insane, just staring at the stairs and the door. And I was like, oh, just go down there. It's okay. You got plenty of ammo and everything. And she's like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I can't go. She, like, she just couldn't do it. She, she just stared at the stairs for like <laughs> yeah. 15 minutes. Couldn't go down. It was, <laughs> the, it was the attic scene for me in VR that got me. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah. When you, uh, when oh, you first see her as a child. Uh, the actual... we Your team at Capcom was uh, gracious enough to invite us out to Osaka headquarters yeah. to play it for a preview event maybe... November of 2016? Yeah, that was like the big hands-on yeah. before um, before release. And I essentially got... I killed Marguerite, and then they told me, 
Uh, all right, that's the demo. That's it. But, uh, and then I ended up, that was back when I was on the editorial team before I moved over to the video. But we also did like a behind the scenes making of reviving Resident Evil stuff. But um, I got, like, my takeaway was that the first couple, few hours were almost reminded me as if Remake was in mm. first person. Like the mansion. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. The, the pacing. The, the herbs. Once yeah. you get past that, like, dinner area and everything. Yeah. Real quick, so what we saw is Brad's gotten bitten. Hang in there. Yep. Uh, Why isn't someone doing something about And Brad's a total this? coward. Which is in keeping with his character because he actually took off. He was the helicopter pilot for right. Alpha Team in the first game and he just bolted on them. He's coming for us. We're He's rocking the Barry die. Burton style though. Yeah. What are you saying? You'll see. <laughs> Maybe a little more intel there, Brad. This <laughs> good, is your chat. This is your co worker here. There's no escape. He's got some big hair. Yeah, he's doomed. Seven yeah. was the only time in recent years that I beat the game, and then I immediately restarted and played through the entire game again yep. right afterwards. I, I did the two paths because you can do the yeah. Stuff oh yeah. Again. yeah. Hey, can I get a T-shirt, Tim? By the way, if you can go back here, of cool beer. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's really good. Not cold beer. No, it's cool, cool beer. Cool beer. Cool. Like, it's like, hey man, this is what the cool guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It has sunglasses on the can. Um. So one thing I really I want. I love talking about Resident Evil 7, but I also just wanted to point out that, like, it, in the time to, like, flesh out the Stars team in the way that they did and get you, like, a little better look at, like, you know, Brad and stuff was really fun for a nerd like me. And, like, they did a good job of that in other Resident Evils, like the remake. Like, hey, let's have uh, Richard have a little bit bigger role. Let's show you a little bit of Kenneth before he died. And these were just, this was in an era where, like, video game storytelling, at least with, like, 3D, like, action games, like Metal Gear, were still, like, getting their feet underneath them, I think. And I just do I just dove in. Another thing I really loved about like early Resident Evil games was they attempted to. Ex it was the opposite of like the Night of the Living Dead movies and stuff, where it's like something happened. There's zombies. Don't worry about it. That's not the point. Resident Evil like relishes in like, and this is the specific virus, and we got it from injecting this into this thing, and like this is what happens when you use it on a on a reptile, and this is what happens when you use it on a you know a gorilla or whatever. Um, Another side note about Resident Evil 7, uh, when you are on the boat and you realize that there's a whole other few hours on the ship, oh, yeah. man. I haven't felt yeah. that way since, I mean, that honestly, that reminded me of like Link to the Past the first time I played, I was like, holy the shit, there's a whole other yeah, 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 yeah. Comes. I saw the ship and I was like, is this just going to be like an ending thing? And then like, the more like I started hours. exploring it, I was like, oh my god, this is a whole other setting yeah. that I'm going to have to backtrack. Through. Yeah, I called my wife as I was playing it at work and I was like, okay, I'll be home in like an hour. Yeah. Like, I'm at the end game of this, mm. I'm just going to finish this up. And I'll be home, and it was like four hours later <laughs> yeah. that I ended up uh, getting home to to see her. But yeah, it, that was such an awesome thing, and how it changed the pace at that point too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I yeah. thought really kind of made cemented that game for me as as something special. Yeah, you get the new weapon, the submachine gun that you start using. Oh, yeah. So with this one, when it came out, and and tell me if I'm remembering this wrong, but you know, one and two pretty much set the world on fire, massive mega hits, and then. This came out and it was a hit, and a lot of people played it. But mm -hmm. I remember people people kind of cooled on it a little bit. It wasn't as hot as like one and two came in. Yeah, I think at, at this point, you know, people were ready for whatever. Uh... Hold on. When did the movie come out? There we go. Oh, and start kind of confusing. So to follow up Dan on that real quick, I think like people were just ready for um, what was next. It was towards the end of the PlayStation's life yeah. cycle. Um, and so I think people were just ready for, for whatever, like the move into, uh, actual like 3d environments and stuff. And code Veronica was kind of like considered the true next, uh, evolution of the series. Right. Right. And, and yeah, I, I think nemesis really stood out like without nemesis. I, I think this is a really great game. You, you'll see as I'm running around Raccoon city, I, I don't have like quite the memory of the map as I do of RE one or two or some of the others, but, um, you know, Nemesis pursuing you, and we'll encounter him here pretty soon, uh, was like the most nerve-wracking thing I'd ever experienced in a horror game up to that point. Oh, it gets... Yeah, you're approaching it. Doesn't it do some sort of like visual, like like a filter, like a whitewash thing? There's, where it's all there's a cut really scene. Really intense music gets like, kicks in. It's like, yeah. dun dun dun. They're called live color. moments, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the movie came out in 2002, right. but there might have been a little bit of fatigue at this point for survival horror. Not just Res Evil, but you had the Silent Hills, Dino a Crisis. lot of the yeah, the Me Too titles. Yeah, Overblood, of course. Where's our new Dino Crisis, Tim? Man, I I really like the head of Capcom. I liked, you should make that. I liked me some Dino Crisis. Hey, people are always listening. I can say that. Oh. Like, uh, everyone reads every comment all the time, which is kind of dangerous information to give. Mike, also, <laughs> if you remember specifically, I know there's just one 
hallway I'm not going down that I need to. It might be where this splits. Can you pull up the map? That yeah. That jog my memory. I will do that. Well, um, Capcom fans are not known to be especially sure. vocal about Capcom <laughs> games, no. are they? No. no. Capcom fans are a passionate family, yeah. and I know... I know them because I am one of them. Uh, it's just I'm on the other side of the fence now. So okay. I always listen to to what people have to say. And, like, I mean, and sometimes you can't say anything, but, like, you can always know what... It's always good to know what people are, are passionate about, you you're, know? You're getting very good at your job. <laughs> yeah. You got it down. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> we ran through this last night. No. That's true. Like, Mike just kept on asking me all these questions I couldn't answer. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. How was uh, Res Evil 8 coming? Yeah. Uh, that's after Legends three. The Legends. Th oh wow! All right, you guys are really going down the down the rabbit hole. So <laughs> I I am very excited. Oh, hold on, I'm I'm in caution. Yeah, I'm gonna play. I, I have a the subject here. Me. Okay. No, hold on a second. Pro move. Got that. He's got it. Okay. He knows what he's doing. Okay. So, wait for it. Wait for it. I feel bad for I, the guy on I the ground there. Like to... Ooh, they're walking away now. I'll get them. I'll get most of them anyway. So I think that you need... Do you need lighter fluid? It has no oil left and cannot be used. The lighter fluid... Actually, did I... For as recently as I played this, there was a lot to take in. We played this in two within, like, three weeks of each other. Okay. Um, I know you're coming up on Carlos soon. Carlos. That's how he talks. <laughs> it's I think not, it's not impeccable just accent. Carlos. I, I think Carlos might be after the Velasquez. first initial... Um, it's uh, Oliveira. Uh, Mike, can you roll your R's? Yeah. Can you say Carlos and roll your R? Carlos. Carlos. Whoa. I don't know. Carlos. <laughs> no, no, Dan. Dan, your do, tongue it, is do it broken. again. I think you got it. Okay. Carlos. Carlos. I've tried it so many times. Carlos. Why did you say Carlos. 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 I think I got it. Carlos. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, no. And if you do it three times, the lights will flash and he'll appear. Is that a Barcelona dialect? South of Barcelona. You're just moving your jaw faster. Your tongue is not moving. No. No. Can you do this? No. You can't? Yeah. That's a fun thing to do. Yeah. Can you do the thing where it's all wiggly? Uh-huh. Oh, I can't do that one. Wait, you couldn't do it either. What? Okay, do so it. Gross. Oh, you can kind of do it. Yeah, it's the not that impressive. Will see it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're impressed. Okay, <laughs> this is kind of reminding me of something. I'm <laughs> fairly certain. You've been to that. That's the safe room you've been to, right? On mm -hmm. the right? Mm -hmm. We might have just been doing the classic replay thing where we talked and I like walked mm -hmm. right Nonsense. Past it, so. Might be. I seem to remember there being something near the bar you came out of. Yeah, you know, I remember the bar, but did I get the kerosene in the bar? Hold on one second. Like, the first Nemesis encounter is in the basement of that place. I thought it was you meet in an alley. You meet at the RPD. Okay, so my bad. It is, uh, I think in my excitement to get the shotgun, I I overlooked the uh, the lighter fluid that was in that basement area. So it's like, it's interesting. I like going back to this one because I don't, I don't know it as well uh, through and through. I know it better than I knew Code Veronica, um, which was fun to do with uh, my now coworker Brett Elston. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm looking for the Y-shaped hallway or uh, alleyway, which I think is I'm coming up on it actually. Uh, I don't know it as well, so sometimes there's still fresh puzzles. And like Resident Evil 3 has some tough ones. I have specific memories of trying to get a power generator back up, and you have to like balance these uh, these levels. Or no, it might have been a water purification process. Um, but there's some tough just standalone puzzles. Hmm. This game is similar to Code Veronica in that there are a few big gut checks that you might screw yourself over uh, before you get to and mm -hmm. not be able to beat the game. That's why I never beat Code Veronica. The yeah. tyrant fight in the helicopter. You or the, the plane. Yeah. You like must have oh, missed yeah. the, the grenade launcher. Yeah, yeah like, I didn't have the weapon. Yeah. I tried everything to push him out the back and I just had a little, a little pea shooter or something. Uh, yeah, Sucked. there's. I think there's an episode or two in the Resident Evil 3 series where they were, it was just Mary trying to get past the nemesis and oh, then yeah. giving up and be like, all right, never mind. It's not worth this, whatever she, he gives you. I'll say that, like, this series, the difficulty is pretty consistent, but there are a couple little spikes. But that's kind of remarkable how they're able to kind of keep it all pretty even, especially in this era where mm. they're pumping out games a year, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's these games, too, became like talking about like replaying them um, and getting stuck is like, I feel like I know that. I had lawn mowing money, so I was buying my own games, and you tend to replay the games that you had access to. But there was that adventure game element of it where I, okay, now I know where all the enemies are going to pop out. I know where all the items are. How fast can I do it? There's yeah. usually really good unlocks that rewarded you for um, for going for like all the uh, the items. 
Okay, it should be back here, I believe. Is it on his body? I think the shotgun yeah, was on like him. It. Yeah. Um, hmm. Let's see. I thought that it was back here. Hold on one second. How do you know it looks like he died before his guts were ripped out? Well, Could it have been his guts were ripped out is the point of death? That would kill yeah, most yeah, people. Yeah, maybe his yeah. like neck was cut oh, or yeah. something. It doesn't look like his he... guts are even ripped out. Yeah. Is there a hole there? So that's just an observation that is... Uh... Or maybe his guts are inside of him, and she's yeah. like, "Oh, it could have right. gotten worse." Okay, <laughs> so sorry. I think I'm. I think oh. I am clicking into classic replay, uh, not like playing mindlessly. So let's, that's okay. Let's it's let's, easy let's to keep slip into. let's keep the hunt going for the the lighter fluid. Apologies to everybody watching. It was a classic replay thing where I got so absorbed in the conversation that I didn't realize what I thought is that you also got kerosene in this game. I was just mixing it up with another one to burn down the rope on here, but it's already soaked in kerosene with the oil. <laughs> so I had I had the lighter oil in my inventory. Oh, wow. Uh, you please, just made a better puzzle. Le yeah, exactly. Please leave uh, leave scathing comments for me on YouTube and GameInformer.com. I will read them all. Uh, but hey, you know. It's going to come up in your employee we had, review. We had a good conversation. Yeah, my KPIs were specifically to uh, memorize the, uh, the items location for all of Resident Evil games. Yeah, so of shoot. Shoot, guys. Uh, Kevin McAllister uh, stopped by to help soak that rope in kerosene. That's mm -hmm. true. That's that's what it wow. reminds me of. It smells like kerosene. Dog was on fire. Soaked in it. I do like this uh, this vibe of this uh, this alleyway. Hey Leo, how you doing oh, in there? Good dodge. Yeah, good dodge. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How are a you little, guys doing? Are you having fun? Good. Yeah, a little backstory on Leo. He was sheltered as a child from all kinds of uh, violence and stuff like really? this. And I realized this is the first time you're actually seeing like real gunplay. <laughs> are you okay? Good game ever. And Leo, it's okay because these are zombie dogs, okay? Yeah. I was sheltered from uh, violence as well as video games in general. He so. played outside. Wow. Well, you know, I've, that, I've like, seen him in his adult life play Hitman and let me say he is ruthless. We're this in the year. same... He's yeah. a violent man. We're, We're in the same fight club together. That's I right. fought him last night. Yeah. As you can see... I won, but he's yeah. on camera. That's why yeah. I'm in the control room. Yeah, for uh, a full body cast right now. Yeah. Leo's probably heard it before, but for a guy whose last name is Vader, he's got a real gentle soul. It seems to we be see he has the voice of an angel. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I've watched. Really I've good. watched him betray Ben Hansen in cold blood in Player Unknown's Battleground. So. Yeah, that was uh, sensing a betrayal coming and trying to get the upper hand. <laughs> That's smart. So I stand by it. No one was going to betray you. Is, does he still bring it up? Uh, I've got a video clip of it, and I like watching it a lot because that's, it's very funny. That's really good. Every night before bed, yeah, I wind up getting killed too. Hmm. Oh shoot, that's grenade rounds. I did not yeah. do those. Whoops. Hmm. Uh, well, we're about to see um, Nemesis anyway. We'll we'll be okay. We're not playing for keeps, right? Oh no, this is the super replay. Oh sh this wait, Juan, what? Yeah. Why didn't you say? I wish we could do out this at some point. I I really do too. I think there's... I'm still putting that in the books. <laughs> Five years from now. Okay. We'll let's do it. Meet back on this day. Yep. It'll be like a... We'll get it, some other it, people married. We'll set up a reason for you guys to come out. It'll be like a... I can make these references now because I've seen the movie It, but it'll be like an It-style reunion where everyone comes back when we're yeah. much older. Or Twin Peaks. It's in, that's in style, huh? The 25... It is, yeah. 20, 27 years later. Wet Hot American Summer, 10 years later. Will that's and Grace. <laughs> excuse, excuse, excuse me, Dan. <laughs> why, why are you staring at me? You always talk about Will and Grace. <laughs> what? I like the way you say Will and Grace. <laughs> will and Grace? You know, I, you're challenging me to talk about it. I've never seen a second of I Will and Grace. Just, I just saw like an ad for Will and Grace somewhere. They're, They're all like on the cover of Entertainment hugging. Weekly. Yeah, like every taxi in New York's got yeah. Will and Grace. Both of them. Is, all that, over. is that still running? It's new. That's oh, what I'm saying. Oh, it's, it's reunion. Back. They're back. It's back. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Will and Grace. So this is a cool moment <laughs> in the game. Wait. It's Will and I thought it was Will and Grace. Like no, Will some, and Grace. I thought it was. It's an ampersand. Will guy, ampersand Grace. I could have sworn the guy's name was Will and Grace. <laughs> Are you fucking with yes, me? Yes, he's. Yes, he's absolutely okay, fucking right. with you. <laughs> you should have uh, spelled out. It's like Holland Oats. Who's Holland? <laughs> Holland Oats. So, uh, <laughs> speaking of halls, we're about to yeah. enter the hall oh, here of we go. Uh, the uh, the Raccoon Police Department. But first, this was really another nerdy thing. Uh, the way that Leon and Claire approach the. Uh, the police department is from the side. There's like sort of a, a an alternate entrance into this plaza, but you could like get a sneak peek at what the the gates looked like if you like hit X. There's the right angle in RE2, and so approaching like the super iconic, what became a very quickly iconic environment, the, the RPD was awesome. Um, and it was cool to have Jill have this approach there because you already knew it well, but Jill works there, so then you get to explore it as like someone who knew who was a seasoned vet. 
Oh, there he is. And this CG, CG in its day was like top notch. Oh man, I, I love the this. duster that the nemesis wears. Is he a good guy? Oh, a nemesis. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's just gonna give him a snack here. Yeah. So okay. did they dress him? Did he dress himself? Was he wearing that when he went in? Oh yeah, we were gonna go into this a little bit. He's like kind of in the spirit of the tyrant model. Um, you know, can kind of go into urban environments and not stick out as much, kind of like Mr. X in his trench coat. He would stick out. If you saw him walking down Hennepin, that's correct. You'd look at him crooked. So I am not going to fight Nemesis right now. There it is. That's the filter yeah. thing I was thinking yeah. of. This yeah. is the yeah. yeah. a live moment. Uh, it's basically like, nice, uh, do or die, and, it, and the story's kind of split. And you can experience, you know, there might be a hole that opens up in the ground, and if you don't react enough or you choose a certain option, you might be able to jump down and explore a different area. We all okay. died there the first time, right? Okay, like, I'm guessing 99% yeah. of people died right 100%. there. 100%. I just ran and right away. One thing that they did uh, that was really smart, I feel like, is they made it so sometimes if you encountered Nemesis and fought him, you might get, like, custom weapon parts. You get, like, you know, Western-style shotgun A parts A and part B, and you could buy and make this awesome, like, you know, uh, lever-action shotgun. Uh, or a special like marksman pistol and so it's like this risk reward of like well nemesis is really hard i'm gonna use a lot of ammo against him but if i take him down he might drop something great huh there's old school exotic quests yep yeah <laughs> ah this place right is so cool and it's you know this takes place before re2 so uh some some areas are boarded up which is a convenient gameplay you know, opportunity for them. Yeah. Like, all right, we, we have a path for you through here. And it was kind of a confu confusing area in Res Evil 2. There was a lot of doors to go through. Kind of yeah. like the mansion, right? Like, it, you had to get your bearings, but now they kind of limit it by closing areas off. Yep. This, this room being famous for, uh, your party's been canceled. Sorry, Leon. It looks like your party's been canceled. Nice. <laughs> Harry Potter hats there. Yeah. Like, I love it, and I, I talked about. I try to talk about as much as I can to anyone who listen. But like Leon has like the worst first day in like <laughs> video game history. <laughs> um, just like man, first he's got the wrong uniform and whatever. Oh, and this is Marvin, who you know is uh, the only cop really that Leon makes contact with. But he is like he's been attacked. He's already bitten by the time you meet him in RE2, so you get a little sample of what Marvin had experienced before Leon met him. So did Leon put him down? Uh, is no, that why he's still just laying there? No, Leon hasn't met him yet. So Leon oh, hasn't okay. come to town. Marvin's, oh, that's right. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvin's been um, been attacked by a zombie, and like, he eventually, like, Leon does have to take him down because he gets... So you're just leaving him here. Just who it's cares? That, take that's his a crap weird one where it's just like, I guess he's bit. Uh, yeah. It seems like he's in like, <laughs> comatose or something. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, I really... It's also convenient, like, you know, you get to re re-examine the RPD and with new eyes and it's uh, a new path through it. But then obviously you do a lot more exploring of Raccoon City proper and go to different places like warehouses and stuff. Um, and yeah, like graveyards and got zombies like coming out of the ground. You fight a giant like earthworm, the gr like grave digger. I don't know. Well, if... That thing uh, took us a while to fight, but you can end up using the electricity in the water to kill him. Uh, in like the park. Yeah, this earthquake opens up this fissure in the park. It's uh, it's intense. Uh, side note: When uh, Marvin had like a report in his hands, that always, whenever that happens, it makes me wonder like, what's the most embarrassing thing you could have in your hand at the oh. moment of your death? That's uh, true. Your penis. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably that's like, it's, it's up, that's up there. Probably. It's got to yeah. be number one. <laughs> yeah. Survey yeah. says. <laughs> ding 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 ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's number one. Ding ding dong dong. You don't want to die whacking off? Yeah. Uh, they, this this game also like they really oh don't. We hardly know each other. Uh, really ramped up the uh, the details of the zombies in like different variety. Yeah. And what I also loved about it, and this is something that became a little rarer in uh, RE games like uh, Seven and and even like the remake, like is just one shotgun shell equals one headshot, and or, or more if you can if you can line them up. And I loved that safety of like yeah. just knowing is your oh oh man you get out of jail free card. Um, so I'm playing a little sloppy, uh, just a heads up. So I'm aware of it. Thank you. Did um, you play through this when we were doing our Guinness Marathon, that second one? I played through, you did, when we did the Guinness Marathon, I played through all of Resident Evil 1, did my knife only yeah, run, yeah, yeah. which was a lot of fun. Was that your first time doing that? Uh, yes, it was. And I also played through all of Resident Evil 5 right. with my best Co friend Dave, who's getting married. Hey, Dave. Uh... At this point, congrats. Uh, Dave's a wonderful that's, person. That's why Shout out to Dave. Yeah. That's why we're in town. Um, and then uh, also played through uh, the remake as well and dove into some others. 
Oh, thank God. Yeah, there it is. I need a little bit of handgun ammo here. How are we doing on time? Yeah, Leo, how is it? Got about oh, he's hiding. I'm cool. sorry, Leo. I'm scared. No. You okay? I'm sorry. Is this too is this too graphic? There is a intro uh, scene that says this game this game contains scenes of explicit violence and gore. I'm sorry if you didn't see that. Oh my god, I missed that. You can't even cover his eyes because his arms are in those casts. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is torture. You can't. You can probably close him. Literally, the only no. thing not covered is no? are his mouth and face. Mike tore my eyelids off in our oh, fight. Jesus. This is Mike. Mike, oh, that's going for his eyebrows. You're gonna have fun, just... man. This is a fun like reunion thing. Someone's getting married, and you're ripping eyelids off. Well, I went for his eyelashes. It's, that just well, he has very strong, strong roots. It's, it's not like, you. like MacGruber's throat rip. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of his main move, go to. I'm gonna be ripping some eyelids this weekend, so you guys should just get ready. It's a real sur surgical precision. Wear some goggles to the sweater. <laughs> I'll suck as many, I'd rip as many throats. As I... <laughs> <laughs> what a good movie. Like as a you PSA. Want, do you want to use whiteout? <laughs> some copy toner. I don't have any loop. That sequel's coming, right? Uh, I think that they've been it writing it. It sounds like it's like, yeah, in development. Yeah. Active development. They say that the guy that they have pegged for the uh, the villain is just mind-blowing who they got. What, who than, do you think that means? I would love it if it's like Jack Nicholson or something. Oh man, or Nick Cage, Marlon oh, Brando. Cage would be great. Brando. That's a, uh, this is dude, I think he's expensive these days. Cage is due for that super self-aware, uh, like playing like a parody of his own characters. Type I, I thing. think he's doing exactly that in some trailer for a terrible new movie he's in, where he's reviving an old role he played in like an unknown old movie. And he's playing it again now with all these prosthetics and stuff, and I, I think it's for laughs. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just some really weird, like, look up his IMDb. It's something that's coming out, like, in a oh. month or two. Man, he you gets gotta, all over the place. He's the best. You gotta think it's truck? someone that does Saturday Night Live, you know, like, that is willing to do that. Oh, like, like part of Patrick that kind of Stewart crew or and everything. Yeah. Well, Nicholson was always, you know, he's yeah, Lauren yeah. and everything. He's got a Daniel day Lewis. Doesn't he have a prosthetic in uh, Moonstruck? He's got a fake hand. Cage? Oh, I never saw Moonstruck. Maybe not prosthetic, yeah. but... He had a, a whole different face and face off. Yeah, it looked. So it's true. I watched that for the first time with you two, yes. uh, like a year ago. I played it at my wedding. Yep, <laughs> yep. That, it was that's accurate. I had a projector at my wedding playing Face Off on loop. Dan. Yeah. So instead of having a friend come up and sing a song, you guys like mid wedding just watched all of Face Off. I just set up my laptop, and <laughs> pressed a button, I was like, "Here you go, everyone." <laughs> and we had the DJ make sure the music came down and everyone watched when they swapped the faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> It's a great film. His face. It has aged beautifully. I admit my main uh, regret in life is not being able to get Nick Cage to make an appearance at your bachelor party in Vegas. Oh, and I heard you were trying to get that. That, that was so great. I mean, he lives there. I just don't think we ever probably could have produced the money because I'm assuming that with Nick Cage, based on some of the roles that he gets, it probably comes down to money a lot. Yeah. Uh, so Taco Bell money. Oh, you do what you can. What would you have done if he showed up there? I mean, I would have just been game for it. I would have been surprised, like shocked at first. And I've been like, all right, let's have some fun with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> let's shoot these guns and jump off buildings with Nicolas Cage. Yeah. <laughs> what else would you do? That's what Tim had me do. I shot a minigun and I jumped off a damn building. It was great. It was cool. At the same time. No, no. That would have been pretty, pretty awesome. As you're flipping. That would be fun, yeah. That was a fun time. Tim and then you could like shoot the minigun as you're falling. It would like keep you up. <laughs> I think I played video games. That is how that ball. works. Like, uh, yeah. wait, what was that game? Got to reload super fast. Uh, yeah. What was the name of it? The one where you have a jetpack that's a gun. Does the gun Mario jet, Sunshine. Jet uh yeah. Jet Dark Void? No, it was the one that you guys were all super obsessed with on mobile. Oh, Jetpack Joyride. Jetpack Joyride. Uh, oh, that's right, because they shot down. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That game was cool. It was fun for a bit. Tim's a great best man to have. If anyone's looking for best man, Tim is a guy you should. I'm grab. in the market. Yeah, if you uh, want a professional hey. best man, uh, secondary uh, double business duty. maybe. Hey, what's that? Secondary business. Set up your own I best could man. Do thing. a little something on the side. Hey guys, come on, come on down. Uh, one and all. Uh, there's a lot of men out in the world, but I'm your best man. There you go. You got it. Done. Best he's, he's done like triple duty this year because I had two goddamn weddings and then uh, Dave's got his too. You were best man for Dave's as yep. well. Yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. Wouldn't trade it for anything. It's an exciting year. Um, oh wait, do, does she have a, uh, trying to remember if she has a number on it. No, maybe not. The stars card, I'm trying to remember what that gets you, but let's see. Leo, is it time to wrap her up? Just about. Right. Okay. Hard, so we got one nemesis encounter. Uh, I got to check out a little bit inside of the police station. I'm sorry that my memory is a little fuzzy on this one, but I absolutely... What I what I hope this does is if you've played like remaster in recent years, or um, you know you came on board with RE7 and you really like a little like more atmospheric, slower paced horror game, but you like being able to fight back and you don't mind playing you know some games from the 90s, like 
The Resident Evil 3, I think, really holds up. Being chased around the entire game yeah. by Nemesis, he follows you from room to room, is a unique, one of a kind. Like, they nailed it, and it was a super trend setting game. And I speak still like I'm a fan, because I am. And it's weird when I'm like, oh, yeah, I work at Capcom, I have to remind myself. But, like, this game is definitely, like, I think, like, top 10 horror games uh, ever. Yeah, yeah. It's the series in general is just unbelievable still. Can't wait to see what's coming next. And uh, let's take a quick break. Sure and come back with another game. I will build you your army. Hey Elise, do you like video games? Yes, why does everyone ask me that? How would you like to work for a sentient video game machine that wants to destroy the planet? What? Ah, stupid Reiner. I should just be possessing people. <laughs> hey Tack, you were trapped in that video game, right? Yeah, I was in there a few months. Your mind probably took a beating then, huh? Feeling a little mentally drained? Yeah, it was pretty taxing being in there. Feeling especially vulnerable to getting possessed, probably? Yeah, a little bit. I tripped. Hey, Wacky Reeves. Hey, what do you got there? A flyer? Oh, yeah, this looks great. I'm in. Really? I don't need to possess you? <laughs> You're a trip, dude. See, it's some war. I knew these flyers were a good idea. In fact, I'll see you all at the Civil War. We're sticking with the PlayStation 1 era. This is one of the first PS1 games I've ever played. By a common destiny. It was near launch, wasn't it? The of I don't think he exclaimed. Many years have passed since this tournament, known only to tournament. the underworld, was the last. We all have to talk like this for the rest of the Some time. Some fighters okay. have come for personal glory. Others have come to fight for those they love. But all will do their best to be victorious. This is xylophone music. <laughs> which will <laughs> ding dong dong dong. their fortunes. Giant Pac-Man. So <laughs> that's a long, that's a lot of words just to say these guys are going to fight and one, one person wants to win. each other up. Yeah. yeah. So this is Battle Arena. Ooh. <laughs> Fancy. Oh, Playing with power. 32 bits coming at you, man. Versus human. <laughs> <laughs> I am human. <laughs> hey, yeah, you're going to have to hand that control over to a human guy. Uh, that's Dan Riker you got on the sticks over okay, there. Okay, so we got... FD rotate. Oh, just kicking it in. Uh, H what? kick, high kicks, and W. What? FD oh, I think weak. rotate. Okay, heavy and weak, maybe? Mm. I think it's Mega Man 7 where he gets H slash. And we're not going to have auto defense on. We'll do level normal. I think it's hot and wet. Oh. What? Hot and wet American summer. It hot comes kick. back. We're going to check out the That's single player game punch. as well. But Dan, let's start Play it human off. mode. Let's do versus human. All right. This is, so for me, this is linked with like my earliest PlayStation 1 memories. It was like <laughs> oh. this and Destruction Derby and uh, and the first um, tech lo loaded. Twisted Metal or load? A loaded. Yeah. Loaded. It was loaded and reloaded. Yeah. Yep. Like right. Metallica. These are brother and yeah. sister, right? Duke and Ellis. That but this like guy, Fa. Well, I love Fa. There's a guy with like uh, the staff. Is that the guy? With, uh, wow, that looks like, like he goes. He says like Fuji film or something. It looks very much like he's jabbing a sword into his eye. <laughs> <laughs> so Vega in his older years is okay. I found block. Whoa, old old Wolverine. This feels great. <laughs> look at this. Look at that waterfall. So the detail. Oh where did this fit in with like the, in the pantheon of 3D fighting games? I like, think like oh, Tekken before... and Virtua Fighter were like the go-to ones, and this was like a step down. And was this? But just... this is before it. And this was a proprietary before... first-party Sony game, right? Yeah, and this is a yes, and it's a long box PlayStation One game. What that means is it's like one of the first launch games. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm dead. See ya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tekken was the long box. Twisted Metal, Destruction Derby. <laughs> Resident Evil. <laughs> that's that's what you do. <laughs> Don't wipe your nose with your Wolverine blades. <laughs> no, he's grooming his mustache. Oh, okay. Getting the mites out of it. I'm holding an original six axis, and it's been a long time, and it feels like it's an actual toy. Like it's, it's just a plastic so shell. So light. Yeah. Wow. That's laser sound effects. <laughs> as you kicked me. That was like straight up anime sound effect. I mean, I guess this is anime, right? Dan, I almost went pro on this, so I apologize. Okay, yeah. I did not. This is one I yeah. did. I was a Tekken guy. Yeah, I know all the hit zones. Do we know what Toshinden means? Is, it, is there a meaning to it? Oh, Leo it might means, be able to look uh, that up. Clay Fighter. Is that right? Is Clay Fighter? Japanese yeah. version. Judgment oh, Clay. Yeah. 
I do remember being impressed by like the 3D character models and like <laughs> what? Oh, nope. well, that's a nope. classic move. Nope. Uh, that guy shouldn't be able to do that. What do you think is happening there? Is it a globe? Is it just a energy sphere? Oh, I love the music. Well, yeah, I mean, these are... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to brutally murder me every time. <laughs> Not all PlayStation games let you just pop the CD in to play, right? Anybody like, else? To, Mike, you want to check it out? Sure. Winner stays. Did all PlayStation 1 games have music tracks on them, or was that just... Not all. Developer? Symphony had that. Twisted Metal had that. I know Sega CD, that was a big thing, right? I think couldn't every Sega CD game oh, really? also have... Uh, Rungo. Yeah. What's he holding behind him? What? Did, that's his, his, his rung. What did, what did Alucard say when he put in Symphony of the Night? Uh, this is a PlayStation <laughs> Black Disc. Yeah. Track one contains computer data, so please <laughs> don't listen to it. But you probably won't listen to me anyway. It's going to tire you out. Mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll for the kill later. Yeah. It's like track one is the one you're listening. No, no, it, it goes straight to track two. That's right. Holy crap. That was, that so, that was so what? weird. Is it a club? What the? So we got Rungo and Ellis coming at it, uh, coming at you live here. Uh, oh yeah, Ellis shoutcast. doing her cartwheel attack and a classic spin move. Rungo back on his feet, uh, deciding not to use the club this time, it seems, which is an interesting strategy because it's his core attack. Hey, Rungo getting the lucky hit in there, uh, using the 3D movement to his advantage. Ellis, of course, using the dual blades, uh, keeping it lively, pressing buttons, pressing buttons, keeping their distance, and uh, Rungo coming in, uh, applying some pressure, cornering Ellis, bringing her to the side. Of course, Ballerina to Shinden. Uh, you don't have to deplete someone's uh, energy just to kill him. You can also get a ring out. Oh, Rungo making a strong comeback against Ellis here. Ellis giving both knives into Rungo's midsection there. He's a tall man with You're a... You're mixing them up. With a, cl with a club. Ellis is... I've only just now discovered Ballerina to Shinden. Someone let me into this tournament. Uh... Oh, don't oh. know how to get out of here. So, yeah, please, someone, please show me the door. Uh, Leo, I now appreciate how hard shoutcasting is uh, after you did your great Well, you job need a color, podcast. man, like Dan. <laughs> okay. That's true. All right, so, I'll, I'll be we'll a color here. We'll start this next round. All okay. right, this is the full Good suite rest. here. I've watched sure. wrestling. Okay. Dan, really excited about this matchup, uh, Rongo versus Ellis here. Um, yep. Who do you think is the favorite in this fight? Uh, left guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. All right. Uh, Rungo. Why, 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 why Rungo this time? Does it have to do with the club or the gold necklace? He's bigger, bigger guy than Ellis. But you know, agility. You know, you've, you've seen the you know the the David and Goliath popular popular uh, fiction popular story yeah. popular fiction movie Dave Dave and, Go Dave and Goliath. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Keanu Reeves in that. Dan, you're really good at keeping the energy up on the, the, whole, the whole shout casting thing. I think it's like mumble cast is a new, yeah, yeah. A new route for us. What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to be a character when you're no! in a shout casting? Like, oh, hey, we got Ellis. We got Rungo. Ellis with the big old bit. Are That's you not dead? What? You're natural, Dan. Yeah. Keep it coming. Rungo gets his power from his necklace. Is Rungo <laughs> like, is he like an Encino man situation? Like, is he a cave? He's like basically a caveman. Brendan Fraser as Rungo. And someone dressed up as, uh, <laughs> as Bruce, as uh, John McClane. Oh, all right. Let's okay. go. Tim's going to play. I'm going to play my favorite guy who so I remember. Mike stays. Mondo. My man Mondo. I feel <laughs> Mondo like. Mondo and Rungo. I remember him saying, like, Fuji film. Like, I, <laughs> I swear to God, he says Fuji something. Uh, Duke. Isn't Look he straight up soul Siegfried. caliber? Isn't Duke a soul caliber? He really looks like Siegfried. Yeah. With green hair. Yeah. Wow. And chewing tobacco in his mouth. Hey everyone, we got Mondo versus Duke coming up for everyone. That's just a strip club DJ. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <Not a> showcaster. <laughs> Mondo and Duke. Coming up on stage two, we got Mondo. Get your dollars out for Mondo. <laughs> this sword's too big. <laughs> what are they called? Claymores? I think. Wow, why do I. Bastard hover? sword. I think what I liked about him was that you could jab with his spear from really far away and you could just cheese people. He's the Keelan. Oh, yeah, that's what you could do. Because now you're doing. Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's hey, it's like it's 1990. Memory, it's memory lane. Help me out. Is this a 96 then if it was launch? Uh, launch would be 95. This looks like an Overwatch map. <laughs> Two can play at this game. Oh! I don't Duke like what to come back. Duke is uh, not. He can't really put his. I'm sword. giving you Mondo a hard time, brah. I'm sorry, about brah. No, Suga. See what he says. Oh, oh, this music's actually really good. That's gonna. You do, fight well. <laughs> is he shrinking? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Melting. <laughs> bout two. Did it say bout? Yeah, it's a bout two. You're about about you, to get ugly. You're about yeah. to fight. <laughs> it's about to get real. So obviously, looking at this now, it's like, oof, games have come a long way fast. But yeah. 
when this came out with like Ridge Racer, it was like, holy crap, 3D movement. Yeah. 3D character models. This is bonkers. Yeah. Oh, can I hold to charge that up? Yeah. Remember games yeah. trying to do the 3D movement thing, like War Gods is really trying hard to oh, do the man. 3D yeah. thing. It's essentially fully 3D. I mean, it's safe for some of the textures in the background, like, uh, or the the flames, and of Damn course. It. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hold on, <laughs> listen for it. All right, we got a match here. None. Uh, yeah, the Fuji film, yeah. <laughs> comes through clear. Yeah, totally. yeah. <laughs> the logo showed up and everything. <laughs> 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 Brought to you by. Oh my god. So this is a pretty classic battle. So they got a little bit of like the uh different different uh what's what's the thing I'm thinking of? Is it Ultimate not Ultimate Warriors, that's a WWF fighter. <laughs> totally but, for honor. But who is the yeah, it's that for honor thing, but there's also that like is it a Discovery Channel show where they would have Oh like, yeah, it was like the Deadliest Warrior or whatever. Yeah. And they made an XBLA game they based did. on that, too. I remember playing I, that. That. Was, that show was fun to watch. It was never as exciting as, you know. Oh, payoff. that was Spike TV, was right? It? Yeah, because it debuted at, like, the Game Awards. Oh, f yeah, probably. Uh, let's take a look at single player, actually. Should, we, should we just see if there's some lore? Who do we want, guys? Um, I think that, who did you play as? Oh, I was really well, good as Fu. I think you gotta go with Fu. But we haven't seen Whoa. Sophia. Sophia, Sophia. Let's she go for her. Caliber? She, she looks more like Nina Williams than in the Soul Calibur. Ivy had the whip in Soul Calibur. Yeah. Oh. So, what do you think would be the ultimate wager to put on the line for a tournament like this? Oh, your uh, life. Your life. So, like your your immortal soul, basically. Yeah, uh, that's what, kind of the Shang Tsung thing. He was going after souls. But here's a problem I have. I'd be wondering if anyone would be willing to help speak to this. Is like, what is the value of a soul? Like, what is the equivalency with that? You know, 80 bucks? What well, well, let me tell you the value oh, of oh. a soul. Oh, oh my what? god. I souls can be used for a, a litany of things. There's One a... being the transformation of lit gold in metal into gold. <laughs> oh, so like a trans... Some call it alchemy, I call it a hobby. Where can oh. you buy these? There's a Rumble different, there's a different like, light. <laughs> there's a different light in Mike's eyes. I feel like I, I see Mike, but it's something He's else. He's aged like 80 years. If you <laughs> don't wish to lose your soul, turn this video off immediately. Or share with seven friends. Or uh, share with eight friends. Eight? Are we safe in the room with you? You may be. It's up to my discretion. Oh, okay. Uh, you can control this. If, if Bring me your soul right now. No, no. I'm you, take your hobby, you take your hobby really seriously. My temper is waning. Soul merchant, which I, if I can call you sir, <laughs> soul merchant, your time in this realm is fleeting, I understand. If this is a hobby of yours, what is your full-time gig? Eating <laughs> souls. Oh, Crafting that, them is just a side. So is that why so you cool. like them, is you just eat them? Is that the only thing you do with the souls? They taste terrible, but they're good for no. my complexion. What could you tell us about <laughs> uh, the complexion? How would Sophia or Ellis's com souls affect your complexion? Like, if you had to choose between is one... Is this Stonehenge or Easter Island? They seem <laughs> to be having a difficult time deciding. I imagine this would be, this would be perfect for a soul a soul sacrifice uh, ritual. This would be the, the perfect setting, right? Like Stonehenge was indeed created for soul stealing, but people doubt the magics of souls, so people bring up aliens and crazy contraptions. Aliens? Was it your ancestors? No, it was me. <laughs> How old are you? As old as you want me to be, as long as <laughs> I have That's not how age works. Wait, hold on a second. What is this? You, as old as you want me to be? Yeah, it's You feed on souls, the prolonged life you shall find. Have you, are you a fan? Have you heard of uh, Stephen King's It 2017? <laughs> no. Speaking of feeding on souls? No, but I... Do you know come, Pennywise? I do come back every 27 years yeah. to it's like feed just off... Like... But It, Pennywise is, is a grump who feeds on children. I am a, I am a fine... Artist with my with my art. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so why would I, that's, that's, no, that's, I that's asked you a sober. question about Sophia versus Ellis's. <laughs> oh, um, what was the question? Oh, it was what, how their how were their souls affect your complexion? Oh. It was my it was my desperate attempt to like wrap this together somehow. But I don't think it's necessary. No. <laughs> how the hell did that character come to be? Um. <laughs> I don't oh, know. It's it was, a wonderful voice. He did it for Seriously. a long time my wedding. Oh, and actually, it was killing no. Me. So at E3, <laughs> at E3 with Gamespot, we uh, my voice. I was hosting a lot of our interviews on our stage, and uh, my voice started to go, and it just naturally came out. I was just into haggard. the soul eater. I was just like <laughs> decrepit, and yeah, and then you'd blow your voice out so much it was the only one that was left. I told someone like if they didn't give me their soul, I wouldn't let them on the stage with or something. I, oh, it was. It was uh, what's his name? Uh, Eric something from the Treehouse, Nintendo Treehouse. Uh, I see. I saw him that all week, and then. I know him well, and then I just I told him <laughs> you should, he needed to sacrifice you, his soul to come on the stage. Have you tried to sing in that voice? No, I can't. Do sing two in tickets voice. to paradise as the soul merchant. Yeah, well, I think I see the lights. The lights. Let's just hear it. Flickered in the room. Yeah. Soul song. 
Uh, two tickets to paradise, please. By uh, you Warren got Buffett. Two tickets to paradise. <laughs> Pack your bags and plenty of souls. <laughs> Don't forget the souls. That's oh, important. I'm sorry, it's going soul, so well in the merchant. beginning. Do you, uh, if, if you have TSA pre-check, do you have to? How do you? Do you have to unpack your souls and put them in a separate tray? No, they. I, I you. I get to keep my shoes on and my souls intact. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Do the souls have shoes? It's a monthly it's, subscription, actually. It's well worth it. You Thank know, you. you make the time back. I can, uh, I can fly. I don't need planes. Oh, that's true. Gentlemen, I want to keep this going, but you know what? Oh! oh. <laughs> uh, it's time to so call it can. another episode here. Oh. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for having and us. And being a part of the show. Of the course. door is open yeah. to all of you at all times. Anytime. We're uh, coming back. And for you watching out there, we'll be back in seven short days with another episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.